All right, everybody. So I'm assuming most of you at least have at least heard of the Orbit program, the Filecoin Orbit program in some capacity. This is our community engagement uh, you know, program that we're running out of the foundation. We've been running this really kind of in different uh, variations over the last four years. And we've had quite a lot of success with it, actually. We've done, uh, we actually have several members in the audience here. We have, we have the guys from Austin in the back, Logan and Alex, who are crushing it. Uh, we have Martina from Poland. Uh, we have the Zondax folks, Laura, Ainwa. So thanks everyone for being a part of this. And so or the original Orbit program, uh, or as it's been run by the like machine of a man, Robert Dowling right here, who is just indefatigable. Uh, <laughs> so, so, Rob, so our original Orbit program was, was really heavy on doing like events and meetups and really trying to funnel just new builders into the, you know, through hackathons and things into the PL builders funnel. And if, and obviously I'm assuming most of you know what the PL builders funnel is, where it's like, okay, you submit a project with a hackathon, uh, apply for a grant, maybe apply for some VC seed money. And hopefully your project becomes like a thing later on down the, uh, down the line. Um, so we've had a really big, it was a really successful project. Uh, we, we were able to onboard a lot of people into the ecosystem using this program. Uh, had a lot of events hosted by ambassadors around the world. Um, had a lot of, especially with the FVM launch, had a lot of new projects coming in uh, during those, those days. And um, we also got a, a shout out in the retro PGF uh, funding, uh, which was, we were one of the, the winners of that. So uh, that's, that's super impressive. And so we wanted to, so Robert is, is still involved in Orbit, but he's, he's moved over to the DevRel team. So he's, uh, so we, we thought we'd kind of take like, take a time to maybe kind of refresh the program a little bit and just try to think like, how can we really best support like where the Filecoin ecosystem is at right now? Like how can we repurpose this program to be, to deliver like maximum value to the Filecoin ecosystem, right? And so uh, myself and, and a bunch of folks here in the room, like Meredith and, and Joe and Gary and uh, Floor as well, have been putting a lot of thought into just how can we really repurpose this to be um, you know, a tool that folks in the ecosystem can use to help them achieve their goals, essentially. So, so this, is, this, is, this slide right here is sort of what we came up with here. So the idea is really like evangelize, empower, encourage, uh, identify new, new talent and contributors bring to the community with the out desired outcomes of really just being like a tool that can, that can drive engagement um, for, and, and like onboarding new folks into the community essentially. And then keeping existing folks engaged and learning and, and, and uh, keeping that flywheel going essentially. Um, so I'm gonna give credit to Gary Moran for this terminology here because he's the, the branding expert. But we basically decided to divide the Orbit program up into like kind of two ways of thinking about it, right? So we have or two, two subsections. So the first is this idea of low earth orbit. Wait, whoops. Yes, here we go. This idea of low earth orbit, right? So this is kind of like, think of this as the shallow end of the swimming pool. So this is, this is how can we bring like new people into the Filecoin ecosystem, expose some of these ideas to new people, um, and how can we kind of just broaden the reach of what we have to offer here just more generally, right? So the idea is how can we, you know, reach new communities, whether it be like universities, blockchain, computer science clubs, other adjacent like deep in communities, like some of the folks we were just, we just heard on stage just now, uh, other chain communities like uh, Martina actually, where's Mar Martina, there's Martina, okay. Like Martina actually runs ETH Warsaw in Poland. So we've done a lot of really successful things kind of like overlapping with her community. And so the idea is like, how can we kind of cross pollinate and just find creative ways to expand just the, the expand awareness and the reach of Filecoin. So we have a number of tools here that you can see, um, things that we can, things that we've, some of these things we've already been doing. Some of these things are new things that we'll be able to implement using some of the resources of the Filecoin Foundation. Um, and so the next idea here is deep space orbit. So this, the whole idea behind this is really trying to be a resource for teams in the network that are um, you know, transitioning or there's, been, there's been, been a lot of restructuring in the ecosystem. So the idea is like, how can we really provide value to teams in the ecosystem that ha are, um, you know, have nucleated out of PL or are, are kind of 
in various, you know, occupying various corners of the ecosystem that may not have been involved or may not have really had a play in the Orbit program previously. So the idea here is like, okay, how can we really deliver value to these teams? How can we provide something of service to these folks? Um, so whether these be kind of developer training programs, um, you know, networking events, different types of online engagement, um, you know, other, other types of like AMAs and like social content, things of that nature. Uh, how can we really just ensure that folks who are kind of the existing stakeholders in the ecosystem uh, can, can get value out of this to ultimately achieve like their objectives, right? So the, the point is to be, the point isn't just another program, the point is to be useful and deliver value for folks and, and help folks accomplish their objectives um, as, as the ecosystem goes through a bit of a transition. So I'm gonna go through uh, some of these slides here fairly quick and then we're gonna have a quick panel uh, where we're gonna talk through some of the, uh, some of the, with some of the folks involved, we're gonna talk through like kind of some of the changes that we've, we've made here. So, so kind of the idea here, educate, empower, uh, evangelize as we went, as we discussed. So education, so these are some things that we actually have now, which we're gonna to continue to use, but also be adding new things, kind of different types of content, events in a box. Uh, different types of content that we can deploy in different situations depending on the, you know, the needs and the interests of the people uh, you know, hosting the event or creating the content. Um, really trying to find new ways of, of just creating online community, online and physical community, uh, whether these be uh, you know, telegram groups, community discussions, AM, like online AMAs and deep dives, or you know, physical events like this. And also uh, evangelizing, right? So we actually have a new tool that we're gonna be discussing here to talk through. Uh, we have a new platform that's basically gonna help kind of, uh, kind of track and like incentivize and gamify participation in this program and um, try to have some, you know, some fun like kind of Web3 native incentive design uh, tooling that we're gonna talk about. Uh, and then, so for the next steps here, so we've got like a new brand relaunch and uh, some new tooling. Uh, building out the online presence, and then uh, also these social channels as well. And also, this is this is a new thing that uh, was not part of Orbit, you know, the, the original version of Orbit, but we're gonna be using some of the resources from the foundation, um, some of our multimedia resources, to really put a lot more focus on content creation and uh, curation and providing tools for folks who are, um, you know, in the Orbit program or participating to kind of amplify their reach using media production tools that the foundation can, can help provide and assist with essentially. So this is, this is something that we're pretty excited about and uh, we're really looking forward to even just hearing from folks in the community, but like what, like what exactly would how, would, how would something like this be useful to you essentially, right? Uh, how can this help advance your objectives? Um, we have um, also spun up a telegram group so if you want to join the Telegram group, that's the code. Uh, also, we'll also have another slide about this at the end. So uh, if you don't, if you miss it now, that's that's fine. Um, and with that, I'd like to call up uh, three folks here. We have Ainoa from Zondax. So, and then we have Gary. So. Gary Moran, who's the creative director at Filecoin Foundation. So Gary's, you know, all the branding and all of the, if you have issue with any of the logos or anything, he's the guy <laughs> that you talk to. But uh, he also designs the corgis. Uh, and then we have Paul. Yes, sorry, I was like, look, he put his hair up in a, I was looking for the guy with the long hair and he put it up and sort of psyops me here. So, so Paul's with Block Live. So Block Live uh, is the platform that we're gonna be using for this uh, incentivization, gamification. Uh, program here. So um, I think I might actually just stand here if that's okay. Um, if that's not weird. Um, anyway, so I know what, maybe we can start with you. Uh, so you've been in, you're with Zondax, right? And you've been in the Orbit program for some time and you've done a few things. I would love for you to maybe just talk about just some of your experiences in the program and like how you've maybe personally found value in it and how Zondax has gotten mm -hmm. value out of it as well. Of course, sure. Hi. Um, yeah, we have been involved in general in Filecoin since almost the very beginning, developing software and engineering solutions or maintaining infrastructure. And when the Orbit program came into place, um, since 
Our founder is from Argentina, and we have a big base of people in LATAM. We were offered to be regional leads in the region, and um, we have organized uh, ever since around dozens of events or workshops uh, from um, topics from Falcon storage providers or to uh, talk about Falcon virtual machines, or we have also got the chance to to demo and to explain the tooling we're building for developers. Um, participating in Orbit has helped us to uh, get more deep knowledge and early knowledge from the beginning about the roadmap of Falcon and the new developments that are being um, constructed and to get engaged um, and also to get early feedback from the community. <clears throat> in places like LATAM, specifically in Argentina, we have seen interest not only as, um, as builders, which initially was the, the purpose of the program, but also from the user perspective. No? In <clears throat> countries, like, countries like Argentina, there is um, huge interest, real day-to-day uh, -day use of crypto, and we have seen also great interest in how to get involved in the network um, as a storage provider, for example. And um, yeah, it has been very intense. It has also helped us to um, to, well, not just in LATAM, but also in, in, in Spain or also in LATAM to, to evangelize in our mother tongue language. Um, our, although Thondax is based in Switzerland, we have like uh, almost 80% of our team speaks Spanish. So we have been able to also um, talk in the language that for the community is easier to, to understand and to evangelize in, in that way as well. And um, yeah, um, very. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, and uh, I think last time we saw each other, we were actually in Madrid, where we did a meetup with a, a local Web3, uh, Web3 hub, Web3 co-work area, where we did a, a, a Filecoin meetup, and, uh, and Zondax was there, and you, you were able to present a bit on, in Spanish about Filecoin, and, and very, it was, so appreciate the work that you all have done to uh, kind of evangelize and, and even just bringing some of this content into a, into a new language also, which is, which is not always the easiest thing to do, but it's, it's very critical for, for getting more adoption. Um, so Gary, you've kind of been, you're like the brand master, the brand strategy master of all these things. So I, I'd love for you to, get to like, give us kind of a brain dump about, you know, how are you um, thinking about like, how, does, how do we create like, kind of like uh, the stickiness to this program from a brand perspective? So uh, it's long been my opinion that Orbit is actually one of the best brands in the whole Falcon ecosystem. Just the, the concepts from a strategy perspective of you know these moving pieces that are interacting with each other, um, and I think it's long been in need of some love um, and some attention from the design team, especially to to level up the tools that the Orbit members have to the the level that the strategies at, essentially. Uh, so if you skip ahead a couple of slides to the brand strategy. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a brand that was really, um, that could clearly communicate the goals of the program and help to keep everyone internally on the same page. So the, the objective of a good brand strategy is not to define what people do, but to crystallize what they're already doing. So for the vision, the way that we saw the Orbit community uh, working was as a collaborative community that empowers the Filecoin ecosystem, propelling the network forward and accelerating adoption. You know, these are people who are at the front line, like, meeting, bringing new people into the network, and we wanted to make sure that that buzz and that excitement was, was in the program and was something that they could convey to people who would be interested in joining. Uh, as for the mission, like how we see the foundation you know, and the program achieving this goal, uh, it's to build an open and inclusive gateway to the Falcoin network that encourages innovation through outreach and education, incentivizes participation, and celebrates the ecosystem's achievements. So Aaron, you already mentioned a lot of things that we can do that, that will kind of work towards these goals. And uh, Paul's going to say some, or show us something really interesting later as well with Block Life on how we can incentivize participation and get people you know, really clearly on the same page as to what they can do to grow and to build the program. Um, so the values, of course, pioneering, driven, and open. So we really wanted to have this idea, like we say, that this is something that's on the frontier that people are bringing new people in with excitement. So we built a visual identity uh, to go with it. And typically with branding, you know, you have a file that says like logo, final, final, do not change. 
Uh, obviously, that's not really suitable for a community program that has to touch so many places, cultures, and people. So we really wanted to build this brand from the ground up to be something that people could get hands on with and change in order to, to meet their own needs. Um, so part of that we'll show you with uh, some of the tooling that we've built on the next slide. This is the bit where I pray for the video to work. <laughs> so we have a video on this slide, yeah. Is this, how do we get it to work? <laughs> But while we're figuring that out, I'll let you know that part of the branding we have is um, you know, custom GPT tools that will allow people to create illustrations based on what they need and not just you know, typing in like, give me an Eiffel Tower that looks like Orbit, but in an interactive way where it's going to ask them, get information from them, and then build you know, the tools that they need without necessarily having a designer or a paid designer on staff. We've set up the Figma files in a way that anyone can, can join from the community, copy the file to their own Figma account, type in the name of their city, choose two colors that will you know, help represent that, and it will generate all the logos that they need in the different formats in order got to help them. Cool. The other thing, okay. of course, yeah, um, there's also been an extensive reworking of Phil.org done by our amazing UXit team at the foundation. And part of that is giving Orbit a home on that page as well. So now if you go to phil.org slash Orbit, you can learn a lot more about the Orbit program there, um, which is great. And we have another tool that um, Paul at BlockLive has been uh, showing us some of the ideas for. This is going to be even harder for you than for me without the video, I think. But yeah. I'm really going to have to paint a picture. <laughs> so yeah. in lieu of that, yeah, why don't you just, Paul, why don't you give us the, the brain dump here on what you guys have built and how this can be used here. All right. High level blockchain, Block Live is an entertainment infrastructure company, uh, but a lot of our meat and potatoes is live event ticketing on chain, real world activations also done on the blockchain. Uh, and we think about strategies for getting audiences more engaged generally that's tied to the on chain asset. Um, in practical cases, we've known for a while that you can change audience behavior with incentives. And we've seen real world applications of for example, incentivizing attendance with a reputation token that increases the top of your funnel. And if you distribute it on check-in, more people will show up. So it's something that we've known was in the market for a while, uh, the same way Blur sort of vampire attacked OpenSea. But it wasn't until I went to ETH Denver, Robert, I think I'll give you another shout out here <laughs> from, from the stage, um, where I saw a prompt in great detail about how potentially you could align and incentivize the production of events at scale. And traditionally, a live event, for example, is a very local entity that scales literally place to place with a team. But hypothetically, like ideas could spread in a much more tangible and sticky way if it was real human beings having conversations in a way that was incentivized globally. So if there were a video, we would be talking through an example of an ambassador program with the core of it being live events and real world attendance and spreading ideas like the one that Filecoin is spreading in a way that is fun and engaging and collects all these data tendrils into the same place so you can actually see the development of this real human network um, in real time. Amazing. Hey, do we have any luck on the video side or should we move on? I think with my description of tentacles, that's. <laughs> The mental picture, right? All right. <laughs> so, Paul, you want to give us like a walkthrough of what this is? Um, All right. I suppose, or you can maybe take my. If you can't see it, maybe you can switch, switch places. <laughs> I think here we're walking through the uh, ambassador side of the platform, where you might be landing on sort of a home page that shows upcoming events, quests, journeys that you could be following, specific to the production of an event. I'm seeing the very end of this video, uh, but this is the redemption of, let's say, an on-chain loyalty token delivered on the FEVM for the redemption of a piece of a beautiful Filecoin merch. And that in brief. All right. So earns, yeah. So complete quests, earn points, redeem for Filecoin swag, etc. Uh, dog food, Web3 infrastructure, which is what we're all here to do, right? So, uh, no, that's great. So, so I'm just going to move on to the next slide here. And then, again, this is our, our Telegram group uh, that we're spinning up as of today. So it's still 
a little bit empty. So if folks want to join, that'd be great. Uh, we just spun it up. So, uh, but anyway, but this is, so this is the idea of the, the new orbit program or the refreshed orbit program is like, we really want this to become like a robust tool that folks in the community can be using and uh, really bring value to the folks in the community, like irrespective of what role you are, whether you're like an enthusiast, whether you're a service provider, whether you're a, a team that's building infrastructure, whether you're what, like whatever your particular role is, like we want this to be something that you can take advantage of and, um, and find value in. So I uh, would encourage uh, everyone to have a think about how, how this can impact them, how can, how can this bring value to you, and um, you know, we'd love to chat more about becoming involved or what we can do. I mean, we want this to be kind of an organic, uh, really community-driven thing, so uh, definitely want to hear folks' feedback on this and uh, you know, see how we can make this uh, valuable for you. So. With that, I'd like to thank everybody for, uh, for our panelists here, Paul, Gary, Ainwa, for participating, and thanks everyone for their interest in the new Orbit program. So 